In this video, we're going to be looking at closed loop models for the autopilot. We're going to develop dynamic equations for the autopilot command to realization. We'll review the wind model, which will help us relate the course angle and flight path angle to position. We're going to review the coordinated turn, which will help us relate our roll angle to our course angle. And we're going to introduce a model called the accelerating climb model, which will help us define something known as the load factor, which will in turn help us with our flight path angle. So let's go ahead and get started. So on this slide we have written down a number of models for realizing the command from, for our autopilot. And so there's a, a variety of different commands that autopilots could receive. Uh, we have, whoops, we have our height, course angle, and our airspeed are the, the main commands that we receive. We also have a feed forward uh, command for our role. But there's other possibilities. So you could have possible commands for our, your roll angle. You could have command for your heading instead of your, your course angle. And we could be commanding uh, our, the flight path angle and this load factor that we'll, we'll be chatting about. But regardless of which models you're commanding, what we're going to do is one, we'll treat or we'll add a, add a state for each command. And then two, we add dynamics for said state. So now looking at looking at this this first order equation, we'll just look at our airspeed as an example. So our airspeed command, this is going to be the input to our our new uh, system. And we have this new state. So our state is the airspeed. Excellent. Now, this variable here in pink, this is our just a parameter. Helps us match our, the characteristics of this equation to roughly what the autopilot is doing. So if we were to take a, a time series example, so on this axis, we're showing what VA is, and this axis is time. Say we're given the command, VA command, and say it's just given as a constant step input. Right? If we looked at this equation, say we're starting off at VA at time 0 is right here, we'll end up having this a relationship up, oh, and it should just go straight now with it. <laughs> but we'll have this relationship where VA uh, converges to our VA command as our time goes to infinity. And really this parameter here helps us with that convergence rate. And so now, now we look at the autopilot and we say, hey, we're, we're giving a command of the, the airspeed. And we could look at what the, what the response of the system is to determine what the par this parameter is. So this parameter we need to design based on the actual response of our system. So the next thing to note is that these two are first order models. Really is just this is basically like a proportional control. Um, the second set of equations add a dampening term where it's assumed that we're going to dampen the system according to uh, the, the time derivative. So um, we'll take a derivative of our input of our input and the derivative of our state And then we have, again, this is now our 
This is just our proportional term again. Proportional. So if we're to look at this system, the, now the states are going to be H and H dot, and the control is really going to be our H command. Oops, H command, and obviously we're looking at well, <laughs> we're looking at this this equation right there. Okay, but we we do take our time derivative, so we could consider our our control as the time derivative of, our, of the actual command. But this now will provide a second order system where it's, this is the second derivative that our command is, is, is affecting. We have these second order models. Okay, so first order models for our airspeed and or roll. Second order models for height and our course angle. And this model right here, so this is an alternative, right? We could do either our course, our course angle or our heading. So we're not going to do both. So either our course angle or our heading. Okay, so now we have our flight path angle. So this is going to be helping us determine our, our vertical motion. Right, so instead of height, we have the option, we have the option of looking at um, our flight path angle or our load factor. Now this load factor will develop in just a minute, but our load factor is just going to be equal to our F lift over our weight, right? So, or, or the force of gravity acting upon our system. And this is n referred to as the, for your, the number of Gs acting on the aircraft. We'll see how that relationship comes up here in just a minute. So, again, and we'll relate our, our um, flight path angle to that load factor, or we'll find a relationship between them. So here's, here's the models of, given a command, how is it going to directly affect the states, right? And these are just kind of a lower level input states, right? But we also need to worry about the effect on, on the rest of the system. So we'll develop those. This slide is really just looking at the transfer function representation. So to get two of them on the same slide, right? So here we can see that um, for our flight path angle, oops, we have the same same parameter. All we've done is we've taken to the we're taking the Laplace transform, right? And this view of it helps us. Uh, if if you're familiar with the transfer function representations, you can you can now start to look at what are our cutoff frequencies, what are uh, what's the damping ratio, and we can kind of look at the, the systems in terms of those factors. But in reality, they, they're realizing the exact same thing. So we just have taken directly taken our state space representation and moved it over to the transfer function domain. Okay, so now this question is, so we have our, for example, we have our new states. We have our states. Say, or we have our course angle and our um, our flight path angle, right? So, how does that affect our positions? So, we can we can use our our wind vector or wind triangle to help us with that relationship. So when we look at this vector, right, this, is, this relationship was developed uh, in chapter two, but this is just the, our, our ground speed velocity in the inertial frame. 
and this is just the, the actual speed that we're traveling. And we can see that it's a function of both of our course angle and our flight path angle. So that's nice. So that helps us relate. So now we've gone from, we've gone from, uh, let me write it over here. Our, these two angles, we've now gone to velocities, right? So we can derive what our velocities are. Now, if we look at this guy, VGI is actually just equal to the time derivative of our position variables because it's in the inertial frame, right? Because it's in that inertial frame, um, it's just the time derivative of our positions. And also note that we have written height there. So that's why the, there's a difference between, there's no sign, no negative there because we've written it in terms of our height. So, but regardless, we have now, um, we, we now have a relationship all the way from our course and flight path angles to our position. Okay, which is really nice. Alternatively, uh, using the wind triangle, right? If you recall the wind triangle, we had V, our ground speed velocity, the actual velocity vector of the wind, and let's see if I can connect them, and we have VA. So we can use that to get, we have now our, this is our VA plus VW, and again, we're, we're having our height, so don't get confused by that. So that's why we have that negative in front of the, the W down. So we have these two relationships. We could either relate our positions directly through our, our um, course angle and our flight path angle, um, or we could use the, the relative airspeed and, and also bring in, bring in the model of the wind. So if we want to have the model of the wind in there, um, then we can do that. Okay, so that takes from our course angle and flight path angle, and we now have a relationship, the dynamics of our position. Okay, so now we have a coordinated turn, and these slides were, were taken from the book, right? I adjusted the chapter number here, and also, um, a previous version of the book had this cosine term, which no longer appears, um, so we can we can ignore that. So from chapter five, we developed this coordinated turn, uh, and this coordinated turn model. Oh, one thing that I sorry coming back here, I did want to actually mention one more thing. Um, this relationship. helps us, I w I'm not going to say ignore, but well, it's really ignore slash overcome the uh, force moment relationship. I.e. the relationship that showed up in when we did U, V, W dot and P, Q and R dot. So now we're directly relating um, these angles, which are being commanded, um, to the positions, and we don't have to worry about these derivatives. Okay, so I didn't want to forget forget that. Okay, now let's jump into the coordinated turn. So the coordinated turn um, is just going to help us relate. Now we have course angle. Right, so we have course angle on one side and we have our rolling angle on the other side. So we're gonna use that relationship. So now that we have the time derivative of our, our course angle, we can use that actually to look at the time derivative of V sub G. So if we take equation 
And what we're going to do is just take the time derivative of it. And this is just a, a wind triangle relationship. Um, we'll see that V sub G dot is equal to our VA dot divided by the cosine of the deviation between our course angle and our heading um, multiplied by, by this term, right? So the key here is now we have our course angle time derivative showing up in the time derivative of, of V sub G. Um, now if we assume constant altitude flight, so we're going to assume that this guy is approximately equal Oh, that's constitute. If we if we then assume that our airspeed is the time derivative of that is nearly equal to zero, um, we can also assume that if we have no wind, right, then this guy is going to be equal to one. And so what we end up doing is we end up just getting that our the time derivative of our um, the time derivative of our heading angle is just equal to g over va tangent phi. And we derived that slightly differently um, earlier. But anyway, so we have the, the main takeaway from this slide is that we have this relationship here, and we can have this or this relationship here under certain conditions. Um, and if we needed, we could get this relationship there, but we're, we're, I don't think we're going to use that. Okay. So our, we have the coordinated turn, and if we if you remember, that was just assuming that our aircraft was kind of fixed to a, a center point, and we're rotating in the horizontal direction around that. That's how we got that coordinated turn model. Accelerated climb is actually very similar. What we're doing is now the pin that we're rotating here is in the center of a circle, and we have a circle of a given radius that now we're rotating upwards in the vertical uh, direction. And so that gives us a, a vertical, um, this, this, the time, to, our course path angle, or our flight path angle, sorry, is we have the time derivative for that. So again, this is similar to our coordinated turn. We're going to do a, a balancing of, a, of the forces, right? So we have our centrifugal force here. And this is going to be the component of gravity that we need to overcome. Oops. I'll just write gravity. And this is what we're going to get out of our lift. So what we can do here is we can just solve for gamma dot, and we get this, this nice relationship for gamma dot. And, and now you'll see that we have this relationship that we talked about briefly earlier, and we have this, we call this our load factor. It's just the, the lift um, divided by uh, the force of gravity, or lift divided by weight. Okay, and so for wings level horizontal flight, um, we're going to get our load factor is equal to one. I mean, if we're just go, if we're just flying straight, um, our lift is cancel. Our lift and our gravity are equal, and so if we're flying straight, it's just going to be equal to one. Okay, so in this horizontal flight, this is. I didn't mean to go back to green the whole time. Okay. This is going to be equal to zero. So if this is equal to zero, then we can actually solve. So this guy equals to zero. We just solve for our load factor, and we get this relationship that we have. It's the cosine of gamma over the cosine of phi. It's important to remember that this is... This is assuming that we have a constant climb. Okay. So under a constant climb, we then have we then have this condition for our load factor. And that's where the load factor equation comes or this this relationship for the load factor 
comes into play. Okay, so we now have this accelerated climb model. So these are just a bunch of different models that we're going to utilize and we'll put together uh, to create um, models for our, our entire system that we care about. So we'll use this accelerated climb, we'll use our coordinated turn relationship, we'll use this relationship to our wind over and over, and we'll also use uh, the autopilot models, um, these first and second order equations.